This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com slash psychytruth. I have tons of awesome videos already ready for you. You can join me on Amazon Prime Video. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration. Welcome to day 11 of this 30 day course. I'm so glad that you're here. In today's class, we are going to focus on our upper body, our chest, our arms, and our upper back. Because as you might have noticed over the last few days, yoga does require some upper body strength. Additionally, before I got into yoga, I didn't even know what a tricep was. So this is a really great way to start to get to know your upper body, build strength, and get the lean arms that have definition and muscle tone um, that you kind of want to show off because you're working hard and you should be proud of that. So as we go through today's video, know that I will offer you lots of different ways to take any of these exercises at the level that you want to take them. And if you ever need to take a rest and break into child's pose, feel free um, and jump back in when you're ready. All right. So we're going to start right here in a seat. Reach your arms up on a breath in. And then take your right arm underneath your left, breath out for eagle arms. And as you come into your eagle arms, you wanna lift your elbows up. So if you notice that you're kind of slumping back, that's an indication to be better to grab your shoulders instead of binding your wrists. Good, so as you lift your elbows up, let this stretch come into the upper back. Stay really tall through your spine and squeeze the elbows together, draw the shoulder blades forward and keep your chest nice and bright. So we're just stretching out some of the muscles that we'll be using later. So if you felt a little locked up or tense or tight, moving some of that tension out before we get going. Great, release the arms, we'll do the other side, reach up. Left elbow under right, lift the elbows up in front of the armpits. Again, if you notice that you're slumping back, then just take your hands to your shoulders or the backs of your hands together. Breathe into your upper back, putting some space right where we tend to get sore between the shoulder blades. One of my favorite stretches. Good. On your next inhale, reach your arms up. You'll take your hands behind your back. So as you do this, you'll loop your shoulder heads back and press your knuckles down towards your feet. If that doesn't feel comfortable, you just grab a washcloth so you have some extra space between your hands. Squeeze the shoulder blades together so that the chest opens. Nice big pec stretch. We need to stretch these muscles, especially um, if they get a little locked up from being at the computer or in the car for too long. Great, inhale, reach the arms up. You'll take your hands behind your back and put the opposite thumb on top. Loop the shoulder heads back, press the knuckles down. Belly stays in, lift your chest up. You're doing great. Wonderful. Inhale, reach up. And on your exhale, let's shift back to child's pose. Bring your big toes to touch, knees wide. And since we're emphasizing the upper body, stretch your arms really far forward. Allow your elbows to lift off the yoga mat and press down into your palms. You'll notice your armpits will stretch just a little bit. When was the last time you stretched your armpits? We all need that. Good, and then walk your hands off the right edge of your mat and place your left hand on top of your right hand, lace the fingers, drag a stretch into the outside seam of the rib cage, the lats, the outer shoulder. Good, walk your hands over to the left. Same thing, other side. Right hand this time on top of left hand. Drag the sit bone away from the armpit so that you're stretching into the side ribs. Your breath can also buoy into the right lung so that you're stretching from the inside out. The breath can actually help you feel this pose more deeply. Wonderful. Come back through the middle and we'll lift to a tabletop. So just one more pose before we get into some of the repetitive exercises for the shoulder. Anchor down into your left hand, reach the right arm up, thread the needle. Shoulder down, cheek and ear down. And for today, wrap the left arm behind the back. 
Allow the chest to fall down onto the shoulder, so you're stretching the outer shoulder muscle. So we're not uh, holding these stretches for a very long time at the beginning because we don't want to go too loose. We're just trying to find some relief from anything that might be bound up. Great. Left hand underneath your shoulder. Reach the right arm back up and touch it down. Other side, thread the needle, left arm up. On your exhale, you twist. Shoulder down, cheek and ear down. And take the right arm behind your back for a bind. The chest can fall down onto the bottom shoulder, so you're stretching the outer shoulder muscles, rotators. Great. Right hand underneath the shoulder, lift your left arm up, and exhale, touch it down. So we'll move into some tabletop extensions. First with just the right arm and the left leg lifting, then just the right leg and the left arm lifting, and then we'll alternate. So to begin, send your right arm out, your left leg back, gaze down and lift the arm up in line with the ear. So we wanna emphasize the upper back, but we also are getting some added bonus, the spinal muscles as well as the glute and the hamstring get a nice workout here too. Take another breath in, on your exhale, hover the knee and hand so they just lightly touch, reach it back out, and then bring it back down. So with the opposite knee and hand that are grounded, push into the earth, draw the belly in. Good. So you're also getting this added challenge of bonus, or added bonus, <laughs> added bonus of balance. <laughs> Let's keep going. Reach out, good. So you're also getting an extra bonus. This is a balance challenge. You're here for four, three, two, last one. Good, just a quick shift back into child's pose, stretch it out and lift back up to tabletop. We'll do the other side. Left arm forward, right leg back. Find your balance. Lift the arm up in line with your ear. Spiral the inseam of the lifted thigh towards the ceiling. Take another breath in, and then just bring the hand and knee lightly to touch or hover. Good, send it back out. Excellent. So find a rhythm here. Check in with your hand and your knee that are grounded. Check in with your belly. Everything's engaged. So you're strengthening the backside of the shoulder and the upper back here, as well as finding stability through the front arm that is grounded. You're here for four, three, two, last one. Good, quick pit stop in child's pose just to stretch out the back, to relax the shoulders, breath in, breath out. Come up to tabletop. So on this next set, we're going to alternate sides and we also get this mental challenge. So whenever we use cross body motion or we're using maybe the left leg and the right arm and then we're quickly switching, that asks the brain to sort of do a little switcheroo as well. So you might notice you get physical fatigue but also the mental challenge here and that's good. It helps us with coordination, which makes us feel stronger in all of the activities that we do, even our morning crossword puzzle. So. On your inhale, reach the right arm and the left leg out. Exhale, bring it down, switch sides. Inhale as you reach, exhale to land. Keep on moving. Emphasize low belly strength for stability and allow your arm to come up high. So you want to feel a little squeeze in the back of the shoulder as you come up. Really good. So good for your core, so good for your arms, especially just waking up the muscles that will continue to dig deeply into during this class. Four, three, two, last one. Great job. Shift your hips back, knees wide, and put a bend in your elbows as you come down to child's pose. The bend in your elbows just releases the tension in the shoulders, so you might notice that the shoulder blades drop out to the sides. 
and there's a sense of relief across the upper back. Big breath in. Big breath out. <sighs> Good. Lift to table. Press back to downward facing dog. Now that your shoulders and your arms are already warm, energize down through your palms, lengthen your ears between your upper arm bones, and let your biceps gently spiral in towards your earlobes. Lift your seat towards the ceiling and energize your heels to the earth. Good. Couple more breaths here in downward facing dog. Let your arms heat up. Continue to push into your yoga mat with the perimeter of your palms, your knuckles, and all of your finger pads. Great. Now, soften your knees. Come forward to plank pose. Lower down to your belly, slow as you can. Elbows bend straight back. Untuck your toes, take a little baby cobra, inhale. And exhale, shift it back to child's pose. Press up and back. Good. Your next breath in brings you to tabletop. And from here, we'll do a little drill that are kneeling chaturanga press-ups. So instead of your traditional push-ups where your elbows go wide, in chaturanga, it's more like a tricep push-up. And for most of us, when we do a few of these more than two in a row, it's best to do them from our knees so that we can find really good form. So lengthen your body from your tail to your crown, just like you're in plank, but with your knees down. Draw the belly in. On your breath in, lift the chest. On your breath out, bend the elbows straight back and lower halfway down, then press back up. Good, so we'll do eight reps. Lower and lift. Lower and lift. Keep on moving and allow the spine to stay nice and long the entire time. You have four, press up, three, elbows are in, two, just halfway, last one, best one. Nice work. Shift back to child's pose. Big breath in, big breath out. <sighs> Lift a table. And let's just try on two from a high plank. Tuck your toes, lift your knees, and we'll do two chaturanga press-ups just to challenge our strength today. Lift the chest forward, lower halfway down, strong legs push straight up. Try one more, hinge forward, lower halfway down, push straight up, downward facing dog. Nice work, I know those are really challenging, I'm not sure if they ever get easy. <laughs> I think they're challenging forever, but they're so good to help you find good form in your chaturanga and build the upper body strength to help you feel really solid in your yoga practice. Good. On your next breath in, rock forward to plank. Use all that strength you just cultivated. Slow motion yogi all the way to your belly. Good. From here, let your arms come to your side. So that should feel pretty good on your shoulders to go from arms forward to arms back and drop your forehead. <sighs> Loop the shoulder heads back, press into your feet, lift your pinky fingers higher than your butt, and then lift your chest. So if this is all right on your low back, lift your feet as well. If that causes your low back to have any sort of pain, put your feet down. Emphasize the squeeze of your shoulders in here. So we're really strengthening the upper back and then hug muscle to bone in the triceps so your fingers are bright and your arms are long. Take another breath in and then lower down. So we're going to do that breath with movement. Inhale up, exhale lower. Feel free to add the legs. Lift and lower. Toes and fingers bright and lower. You've got this. And lower. Anytime you need, your feet can plant back down. Let's go for four. Lift on the inhale, lower down. Bring your hands higher than your hips. 
lower down. Reach all the way back, lower down. Last one, lower down. And bring your hands underneath your forehead. Rock your heels side to side to relax the low back. <sighs> that feels good. Great. So we'll do something similar called Superman's, but instead of your arms being back, your arms are forward. So this just helps strengthen the shoulders all the way out to the fingers, as well as the upper back muscles. Great. So again, if your low back feels any pinch, any pain at all, keep your feet down. Drop your head, reach your arms forward, lift your arms and lift your chest, just like Superman, like you're flying. And then from there, check in. Lift your feet. If that causes any low back pain, put your feet right back down. One more breath in, and then lower. So let's take eight of those. Okay. So let's do eight reps. On your inhale, lift. Reach as far forward and back as you can. Exhale, lower. Breathe in up. Breathe out and lower. Again, if the low back doesn't like it, put your feet down. Use the breath to help you buoy up. Use your exhale to lower. Four more. Three. Strengthen the arms. Last one. And release. Hands come under the forehead. So whenever you do back bends of any sort and these are considered back bends as well. You might notice that your heart rate starts to rise. Your breath can help you slow it down. That's because when you're in a back bend, it stimulates your adrenals. So you get a little kick, a boost of energy. And then your slow, steady breath helps it release out. Great. So we have one more belly down exercise. And this one kind of simulates a lap pull. So you're going to get all of this toning for the sides, all of it into the outer shoulder and down the waist. So who doesn't want that, right? Okay. So just like Superman, you'll lift up, but on your exhale, you'll grab like an imaginary barbell or an imaginary rope and you'll pull it back. Let your elbows go wide and drag the shoulder blades away from the ears. Option to keep the toes up or down, it's up to you. So reach forward, gazes down. On your exhale, pull back, squeeze the shoulder blades. You're also getting the muscles between the shoulder blades engaged. Reach forward as you inhale and lower. Exhale, contract the upper back muscles and pull your elbows down towards your waist. Good, inhale, reach and get long. Exhale, pull it back. Let's do four with the legs lifted. Reach. Pull, reach, pull. Last two, pull. Last one, pull. Nice work, everything down. Rock your heels side to side, relax the low back. Good, and then press back to child's pose. Drop your hips towards your heels. Oh, that feels so, so good on the low back strengthening and lengthening our lumbar spine, the spinal muscles, the muscles between our shoulder blades. It's not always the most comfortable thing, but for great posture, we have to work those muscles. One more breath in. One more breath out. Good. Come to tabletop and downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, come forward to plank pose. So we're just going to continue to increase the ten intensity with some more challenging exercises. If at any point you need to drop the knees, please do. In this plank, keep your feet hips width distance so you have a nice wide base. Draw the belly in. From there, root down into the left hand and take your right hand to your left shoulder. Then plant your right hand down, left hand to right shoulder. So you're just alternating. I can already feel my shoulder muscles shake and quake as I touch them. Remember that you can always take this from your knees. Belly is in. 
So you're also getting an awesome core workout. And this will help you in your down dogs, in your chaturangas, handstands later down the road. You're here for four, three, two, one. Ah, drop your knees, shift back, breathe. Good. Tabletop. Last time to down dog. Come on back, pedal out your legs, stretch your shoulders. And once you feel like you've rinsed that out just a bit, settle into static downward facing dog, stillness and breath. <sighs> Good. Rock forward to plank pose. Lower down to your belly, you're getting pretty good at that now. And bring your elbows underneath your shoulders. So this is a posture called Sphinx Pose. Press into your forearms, open up your chest, and press down through the tops of your feet. So that'll engage your leg muscles and it'll help your low back feel happy. Draw the belly in. Good, and from Sphinx, we'll take it into forearm plank. So tuck, excuse me, tuck your toes. Let me redo this because I want my fingers back here and so I need to adjust my body. Okay, cool. So from Sphinx Pose, let's come into Forearm Plank. Tuck your toes, engage your belly a lot. You need your core strength. Press into your forearms. Then begin to lift the ribs in. The pubic bone starts to drag towards the belly button and then last, the knees lift. Good, from here, rock forward and then gently rock back. If you need to, you can also clasp your hands. Rock forward and gently rock back. Belly is engaged the entire time. Toning the deltoid muscles. Those are the muscles that look like a little cup around your shoulders. The ones we're always trying to tone. Forward and back. Forward and back. Let's take four more. Four. Three, two, one. Nice job. If your hands are clasped, unclasp them. And then begin to walk your toes up towards your elbows into dolphin pose, our challenge pose of class. Push down into your forearms a lot. Then hug the head of your arm bones up into your shoulder girdle and continue to tiptoe until your hips are as high as they'll go today. If you notice that you're collapsing down or your head's getting really close to the ground, continue to push into your forearms. You want to use your upper body strength here. I know that you can, stay with it. You're here for just a few more breaths. I can feel my upper body shaking and quaking. Stay with it. One more inhale. Nice work, knees down. We'll take embryo variation of child's pose. So the belly will come back to the thighs and then sweep your arms down by your sides, fingertips towards your toes. <sighs> oh my goodness, this feels so good. Definitely earned it. Just let your shoulders relax. Hmm. So we used our legs, our core, and our arms in a lot of these postures. And the bonus of using lower body and upper body together is that it increases circulation and it's also a bigger challenge for the body. So it's a deeper caloric burn, boosts your metabolism, and increases overall strength. So you're doing awesome work today. Good, come to tabletop, lower down to your belly. We're gonna take one of my favorite stretches for the shoulder called wishbone pose. So look to your left, extend your right arm out from your shoulder, and place your left hand next to your rib cage. From here, roll onto your right hip and step your left foot behind you. You want to make sure that there's no pinch in your shoulder, so if there is, roll back to your belly and allow your arm to be a little bit lower down towards your side or the elbow slightly bent. Great. Roll back to your belly and let's take the other side. 
switch your gaze, extend your left arm out like half of a T. Place your right hand next to your rib cage and then roll over and step your right foot behind you. So again, if you notice that you feel any pinch in your shoulder, change the position of the elbow or lower the arm just a tad. This should feel really nice on your chest, the front side of your shoulder, and there should be no pain or strain in your neck. So let your ear and your skull be heavy onto the yoga mat. On your next breath in, press yourself up. We'll just come onto our back. So flip over, recline all the way down, and draw your knees into your chest. Give them a big squeeze. You can rock the body side to side. Whenever we're doing upper back work, most likely we're also doing a little bit of spinal extension. So just coming into this little ball pose can be really nice. Great. And then relax the feet down. Extend your body out on your yoga mat. And we'll take cactus arm variation in our Shavasana. So elbows away from the armpits, backs of the palms on the ground. And if that feels very tight in your chest, just take a soft W. So maybe it's more like uh, a T with just a small bend in your elbows. But if the cactus arms feel all right, take that because it increases the stretch across your chest in the front side of your shoulders. Start to notice that your breath is going to lower, heart rate lower, body cooling down just a bit. Whenever we are working our upper body as well as our lower body, we tend to cultivate a little more heat. Whenever we do a lot of repetition from things, we tend to build a little bit more heat. So this can be a great opportunity to cool it down. One more inhale and exhale. That feels good. Knees to chest, roll to your side. So come on up to a seat and take your hands to your heart. Well, you did it, great job. I know that these videos are getting more and more challenging, but that's on purpose because your body's getting stronger, you're getting healthier, and you're getting closer to your weight loss goals. So make sure that you stick with it. And tune in tomorrow. We have a special amped up hit just for you as we continue to increase intensity. We're pushing past our comfort zone so that we can get the results that we want. Thank you so much for being here. And until tomorrow, namaste. Hey there. Today's bonus tip is all about the snack attack. So if you notice that you are reaching for snacks that aren't so good for you, this video is for you. The truth is when we grab a snack, it's usually out of habit, out of routine, or because we're feeling tired, or we just want something yummy. So we need to get real about what we're reaching for and know that there's always healthy alternatives. If we just try to quit our snacking habit cold turkey, what often happens is we'll be hungry throughout the day and then when we get home, we totally blow it. Whatever's in front of us, we tend to eat because we're starving. So let's talk about snacks. You know I love snacks that are really close to their whole form. So if you're gonna grab a handful of nuts or maybe even something like a really great dark chocolate, for me at home, I like to take a dark chocolate that doesn't have a lot of extra ingredients and it has a cocoa content of like 70 or more because chocolate actually has a lot of great minerals and vitamins for you. And then I take my chocolate bar, I throw it in the freezer and I do one square at a time. The freezer makes sure that it melts a little slower in my mouth so that I can enjoy it longer. And I just love chocolate. So that's not something I'm ever going to give up. And when we think about snacks, it's not about deprivation. It's about something that tastes really great and has some value for you. But let's say you haven't reached for a little bag to throw some nuts and seeds into, or you don't have a piece of fruit you can grab at home that you love, and you're looking for something that's packaged. Well, that's fine. There's a lot of stuff on the market 
that you can grab that it's going to have things like whole grains in it, or it's going to have um, sweeteners that are maybe a little bit closer to the natural source. But I still want to encourage you to turn the box over, look at the label and find out just how much it does have in terms of added sugar or added fats or um, ingredients that you don't understand or can't read. The truth is we're not trying to deprive ourselves of all of the sweet things in life. We just have to be really honest with ourselves about what we're reaching for and what the ingredients are. So if you have a particular granola bar that you love at home, but you know it has some added sugar, that's okay. Just be aware of how many calories it has, be aware that it does have added sugar, and make sure that you're considering that in your overall diet. If you do have the opportunity to reach for a snack that's really close to its whole form, I encourage you to do so. There's a lot of information out there about saying, cut this and never eat that. And what we really need to find is something that sustains us for a lifetime. Usually when something is a deprivation diet, we don't stick with it for very long. I am so for you finding a balanced diet that's full of whole foods, beautiful foods, and foods that are close to their natural source so that you feel full so that you're getting the vitamins and minerals that you need, and so that you really enjoy what you're eating. And that includes enjoying your snacks. So this week, I'd love for you to examine what snacks you're reaching for and see if you can substitute a delicious, healthy alternative so that you feel really good about your snacking habits. And also be aware if you have deprived yourself all day and you tend to sabotage yourself at night. That may mean that you need to prepare ahead of time and make sure that you have healthy snacks within a hand's reach so that you feel full and satisfied all day long. When it comes to putting together a diet and exercise plan that you can sustain for a lifetime, it means that you have to enjoy it and it has to be something that's realistic for you. I am so excited that you're taking the time to make these meaningful changes in your life. I'm so glad that you decided to take on this challenge with me. I'm rooting for you, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. You can stream more full programs and classes right now on Amazon. Click the link below to find Julia Marie Yoga on Prime Video or on the Amazon Wellness Plus channel. Introducing Yoga Plus, offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus, download now for free.